Hi everyone, this is uh, Nate with Smurt, and uh, I'm going to do a quick how-to on setting up PowerChart on your remote devices, uh, as well as how to get remote access for PowerChart working. This will come in really handy during your third and fourth years and uh, throughout your career if you end up working at UNM. I want to give a quick disclaimer. The uh, the app that we use for this, Citrix Receiver, uh, just had a new version put out, and we still don't have everything figured out about it, uh, but we have it working pretty well, so hopefully this will be pretty seamless for you. Uh, we also want to remind you guys that uh, using PowerChart, you'll be accessing a lot of patient data, and the HIPAA rules apply for all this patient data need to be very careful with how you use it and uh, where you use it, what kind of network you're using it on, uh, because you could be possibly held liable for any kind of breach of security. Uh, and in keeping with that, we strongly recommend everyone to put a, uh, a password on their mobile device. If you have, for example, an Apple device, I know you can go into your security settings and set a password to be able to unlock the device uh, and you can even change it now to be a very strong password instead of just a numerical password. Um, there is also built-in security through the Citrix Receiver app that requires you to have your, uh, your SharePoint password handy. So there's some other security measures that have been employed. Um, and as a final security relevant comment, we have tried to make all the links to um, any kind of sensitive information in this how to go through SharePoint so that you actually have to log in with your, uh, your secure password. And that way we're trying to make sure this, uh, this whole setup stays secure. That, that's why I've blurred out a lot of the addresses and the links in the video uh, because we need to make sure that uh, even though this video is publicly accessible that all the information it contains, anything that is possibly sensitive is password secured so we can limit it to HSC users. Uh, with that out of the way, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Part one, the first thing we need to do is get some training on Learning Central. If you go to uh, Learning Central, um, this is what the login screen looks like, and you can see the address to get to it there. Because this login screen is publicly accessible, it should be okay to show this web address in the video. Uh, once you get to this screen, you will need to securely log in with your UNM Net ID, which will probably be different than your GroupWise and your SharePoint login. That's the one you use to get in through like my UNM and, and uh, stuff like that, Lobo Web. Uh, once you are logged in, you'll be presented with a screen that looks something like this. You can see for me it's uh, signed in right now. And if you uh, look in the top right, you'll see a, a search box. If you type in that search box, uh, keywords like power chart and remote, uh, you'll have a good chance of coming up with this uh, learning module. That's the one we're looking for, UNM Hospital Citrix Software Authorization Promote Access to Power Chart. Once you search for it, this is hopefully what you'll end up with. I used just the words power chart and remote and it popped right up. Uh, you'll need to click on the go to content button on the right hand side there in order to access the module um, and get approved. Once you do that, you should be uh, automatically approved to have remote access to Citrix. Um, sometimes it doesn't work totally automatically though. I know I had to call help desk and have them manually put me on the list after I had completed this module and we've included instructions on how to do that uh, and we've linked to it here so you'll see that later on. Okay so part two we're going to do the Citrix receiver setup. Um, I'm doing this on an iPhone and it works similarly on the iPad or iPod touch uh, they even have a Citrix Receiver app for Android that I've seen work just fine. And uh, there's a Citrix Receiver app for Mac OS X for your MacBook or whatever you have, laptop. Um, I'm sure that there are similar options available on, uh, on Windows and PC devices. I just haven't used them, so this is going to be centered around uh, how to set up for iOS devices. Um, if you're going to try to set it up on your Mac, you do need to download the app from the Citrix website, which is citrix.com under the download sections. 
Uh, for iOS devices like iPhone or iPad, you need to go to the App Store. Uh, hopefully everybody knows how to do that on their phone. Click on the App Store app and then search for Receiver is what I used. Uh, and second from the top there, you see the Citrix Receiver app. Go ahead and click on that. Uh, and here is the next screen you'll get. Go ahead and click on uh, install, or yours will probably say uh, free or purchase or something like that. Mine just says install because I had already had the app. Uh, it'll prompt you for your Apple ID password. This will be your iTunes login, whatever you use to purchase other apps. Um, I have mine blurred for security reasons. Once the uh, app is downloaded, go ahead and click on it to run it. And you'll be presented with a screen like this. Um, go ahead and click add account and the next screen you'll get to will look like this um, it's going to ask you for the address uh, that UNM uses to host the, the Citrix software um, in order to get this address you'll need to go to this link this is uh, a link that's hosted on the smart section of SharePoint so if you don't feel like typing this all in uh, check in the comment section around this video. I'll, I'll try to copy and paste one in there for easy access. Um, or you can also just go to the Smart section of SharePoint and then go to Documents and click on the one titled Citrix Receiver Setup. Um, the reason I'm comfortable posting this link publicly is because it does require your, uh, your secure SharePoint login to make sure that we're, uh, we're only getting people that are supposed to have access to this information. For that reason, I won't display the contents of this link um, on the video, but in there you'll find a bunch of information necessary for the rest of the setup, including some addresses, um, you'll see the domains you need, and some more uh, information for setup, the help desk number if you have problems. Um, note that in my uh, suggested account names, once you follow this link in the description portion, the ones that say secure in the description can only be set up and uh, afterwards accessed if you are on the HSC Secure Wi-Fi network, which is only available on campus or at the hospital. So if it says secure in the description, you won't be able to set this up unless you are at school at the time. Um, the other ones that do not say secure, that say remote, will not work at all on that network. So if you are on the secure network, you need to be using the secure account. If you are not on the network, you need to not be using the, uh, the ones that say secure in them. Uh, I, that might not make a lot of sense right now, but hopefully it will in a minute. Just keep in mind that I said it. Um, just keep that in mind. So... Um, if you're having connection problems, uh, first check what network you're connected to by going to settings on your iPhone. And uh, if you're unable to connect, maybe you're on the wrong network for the account that you're trying to use at the time. Also note that the accounts that have the word Cerner in the description that I've listed on this link uh, have direct access to PowerChart. Um, whereas the ones that say vApps in the description have the direct link to things like iSight. So you'll have to use different accounts for different tools that you're trying to get to, unfortunately. Uh, I know this sounds confusing and hopefully it'll become clearer later in the video. Okay, so now that we've uh, gotten that address from the link that we had on the previous slide, you need to type it in to the, uh, the address blank. Um, your screen will probably still look like this. Um, once you get it typed in, it will change to look like this. Uh, you can make up whatever description you like. Um, the ones I've chosen, I've, I've chosen because they help me remember what apps I'll be able to access when I'm connected through that and what, what Wi-Fi network I need to be on in order to use them. Go ahead and use your username and password from SharePoint. That should be the, the appropriate ones for this and then domain, uh, use the one that I've listed on that link, obviously. Go ahead and click Save in the top right corner afterwards. Uh, once you've saved it, go ahead and click Settings in the bottom right hand corner, if you can see where that is, and then click on Accounts. And you'll see that you've successfully added one account to your Citrix Receiver app. 
Um, let's go ahead and add another by clicking the, the button in the top right hand corner, the plus sign, and then go through the same process again using the links and the description and such. And uh, once you're done, you'll be able to have multiple accounts. Uh, when you're all finished, if you go ahead and set up the secure ones as well at school, you'll have four. Uh, at the time that I took this screenshot, I had only had the two remote ones set up. Part three, we're going to go over a few tips and tricks on how to use the Citrix receiver app. Uh, it's uh, got some neat tools built in that help you uh, navigate PowerChart on your tiny screen on your iPhone or whatnot. Uh, more easily, and uh, but it's not perfect. Some of the things still remain difficult. So hopefully we'll give you a few tips to help you be more efficient. For starters, your normal gestures that you use on your iOS device will remain the same. For example, you can pinch to zoom in and zoom out. Um, it will click wherever you touch by default. If you touch the screen in a certain place, it will act like you had clicked on it. And then uh, one neat gesture it took me a while to figure out is if you use a three finger tap, tap with three fingers all at the same time, uh, it'll bring up the keyboard for you. So instead of having to go find the keyboard button, you can just three finger tap and it'll bring up if you need to type anything. Okay, so once you've got all your accounts set up and you log into account, you'll be presented the screen like this under apps. Um, all these apps are the, uh, the different things that you can access through Citrix Receiver uh, that UNM has made available for you. Uh, you'll see the little stars on the side. Those are going to be indicators for whether or not you've made a, a given app into a favorite. I recommend that you go ahead and set up some favorites for quick access. And I'm going to show you how to do that. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see um, I'm on the... the the uh, account that was listed as vApps Remote currently, and if you scroll down on that one, um, you will see UNM Hospitals Intranet is a pretty handy thing that I use pretty frequently, so I'm going to make it into a favorite. Once you scroll down, you just click on the star, and you'll get this pop-up box, click Add Favorite, obviously, and then it'll turn into a yellow star, indicating that you've successfully added it as a favorite. Um, if you'll keep on scrolling down in Packs, that's where the, uh, the EyeSight app is, is stored so you can get your imaging, your radiology stuff. Open up the PAX folder and then you'll see two different uh, links for, enterprise, or for EyeSight Enterprise. Um, the one for Macs is supposed to be optimized for Mac screens apparently and I haven't noticed a whole lot of difference between the two. Uh, maybe you guys will. Okay, so if you click Favorites and down the bottom left, it'll filter out all the other apps that you did not select as favorites, and you'll be left with the ones that you made into your favorites for quick access. Uh, please note that the only ones that are going to show up under your favorites are the, uh, the, the ones that were marked as a favorite for the current account that you're logged into. So as I mentioned earlier, the ones that say Cerner in the description have that direct access to PowerChart. The ones that uh, say vApps in the description have that direct access to GroupWise and Internet. So you can tell from the ones that are here that I'm obviously logged into one that says uh, vApps. In order to get directly into PowerChart, I would have to log out and then go into settings and or uh, I'd have to log into one of the Cerner accounts to get directly into PowerChart. And uh, here you can see this is one of the Cerner accounts. Once you've logged into that one, you have options to access PowerChart. Um, I recommend only making one of them a favorite just to keep your screen less cluttered. Uh, the reason there are multiple PowerChart apps available is because if you're on a, uh, a one of the computers, then if someone else is logged into one of the PowerChart uh, apps, you can log into the second or the third uh, so that you don't have to force them to log out. On your personal iOS device, this probably won't be an issue, and so it'll just be extra and get in the way. So I recommend only making one of them into your favorite. Once you're actually using the app, uh, this is uh, after I've entered in the, the hospital's intranet that I set up earlier. Um, there are a few things you ought to know. For one, the little uh, six squares that you see in the bottom of the screen there is uh, a button that you can click on to get uh, some other features. If you click on it, this will pop up. Uh, the X that you see in the top left out of those six um, closes the current window. So it's like clicking the red X in Windows with a little red dot 
um, on a Mac, whatever the, the closest window is and the screen will close. So for example, if I clicked it right now, the, the window that says Windows Internet Explorer would close and I'd be left with whatever's behind that. Um, if you click the button with the four arrows, you'll get a set of four arrows that you can use to act just like arrows on the keyboard. Um, if you click on the button that looks like a keyboard, guess what? You get a keyboard. Uh, I think the easier way to do that is with a three finger uh, tap like I was talking about earlier. And if you click on the arrow, um, it'll change the way uh, scrolling works. So you can scroll within Windows easier. It's kind of difficult to click on the little tiny scroll bars sometimes. So you can use that option to be able to scroll around within a window uh, a little bit easier. All right, so um, in closing, I wanted to mention that the, the screen is really too small to be practical for you know heavy power chart use on an iPhone, obviously. Um, it might be handy someday, though, and maybe when you're a fourth year and you can put in, uh, put in orders, uh, it'll be handy for putting in that emergency order that you maybe forgot to do before you left your workstation and you're halfway to lunch and you realize you really needed to order that one thing. So you could probably use it for, you know, small emergencies like that um, where you don't have convenient access to a workstation. If you have something bigger like an iPad, I found it really handy for checking lab values during rounds, for example, when uh, the attending asks you or another student, you know, what was their hemoglobin and you forgot the value. Uh, if you have power chart already open and logged in, it's actually pretty quick to click and find the value. Uh, neither of them, unfortunately, is very good for writing notes, perhaps unless you had a, uh, a separate keyboard for your iPad or iPhone um, hooked up via Bluetooth, you might be able to write notes. But the, uh, the automatic spell check and, and auto-correcting on the spelling that normally helps you type on, uh, on iOS devices doesn't work through Citrix that I've seen. So that means you end up with lots of little typos, and uh, so I can't recommend it for actually writing your notes, although maybe uh, revising them or submitting them later would be handy. So good for thing some things, not so good for others. Anyway, we hope this recording has been helpful in getting everybody set up to use PowerChart on your mobile device and getting remote access to PowerChart. If you guys have uh, specific suggestions on how we could improve it or things that we should clarify, please don't hesitate to let us know. We'll be happy to help you out in any way we can. Good luck, everyone, and hope to see you all soon.